All right, guys, welcome back. So we are here in Palatka, Florida, and uh, some of you guys may have already guessed where I'm at, but I'm at Big Show Terry Scroggins' house. Uh, I'm down here with Josh Clark from Angling AI Molds. We're having a weekend of baits, fishing, and fun. Um, so today, uh, before we start making stuff on our own, we're actually gonna go visit a, uh, let me wipe off my lens. We're actually gonna go visit a bait production plant that actually manufactures the baits. So Terry has his own um, line of baits, the Big Show baits that you can buy on Tackle Warehouse. Uh, San Stanford baits, I believe is what they're called. I'll put something in the description. Um, so we're gonna go visit the production facility. They're running big production molds, injection machines, you know, mixing gallons of plastic at a time. Uh, so we're gonna give you guys kind of a little behind the scenes look of how things are done in the big production world. Um, so that's kind of what this video is going to be about mostly. Um, and then after that, we're going to film some other videos this weekend. We're going to be demonstrating and uh, kind of unveiling a new bait um, for Angling AI. Josh has a new little crawl mold that we're going to be doing. And then we're going to take it down to the Harris Chain of Lakes tomorrow. I think that's the plan to go punch with it and hopefully get some fish on film for you guys. So uh, going to be a fun weekend. Guys, we are at an undisclosed location outside of Jacksonville. We're in a plastic bait production plant. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show you guys uh, a little bit of uh, production mold. Uh, well, big big production bait making. Show you a little bit how that works. Um, here's what a big production mold looks like. So this is actually that's the Angling AI kicker tail worm. Uh, that's the uh, production mold of it. Um, so uh, these guys shoot for DOA lures. You've probably heard of the of the DOA shrimp. So uh, we're we're gonna show you how it how it happens uh, over here. That's some glitter right there. Look at this. Oh, that's great. All these huge amounts of glitters. All right, so a quick little crash course on how bait production is done on a large scale. Uh, and just look at all that silver glitter. That would take me like five years to use. So anyway, you have this small, well, I say small, you have this container of plastisol. It's already got the colorant in it. Um, it's already being mixed. So they take this cold plastic and it gets drawn out of this container into, into these, um, well, th through these valves and hoses, and then it gets um, shot. Yeah, you'll see that. You'll see that arm moving. That's shooting plastic, cold plastic, into this heat box right here. This heat exchanger then cooks the plastic. Let me go around to the other side. So that heat exchanger cooks the plastic very quickly, and then runs it through these heat hoses, through these valves, which goes into the mold. Um, so it's all done on, on these timers, on these big machines. And right now that mold is being filled. That's the actual mold in there. Um, so that's kind of how this is done. So, th so these machines right here control the timing. Um, so it's, it's all done from right here. And, uh, and then you can see that they're sorting these worms out over here, hanging them up by the runners. Um, lots of stuff happening. And then there's the baits coming out of the mold right there. Yeah, and then they're already on to the next ones. How many? Uh, how many cavities is this one? Is this uh, about thirty or so? I don't know. I've never counted. Never counted. <laughs> Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight, and it takes what about a minute and a half for each run? Yep, seventy-five seconds. Seventy-five seconds. So every seventy-five seconds, they're running twenty-eight of these uh, chartreuse ribbon tails. A beautiful bait. And I'm told that this bait is actually a trailer for a striper lure up in North Carolina. It's not, it's not even a worm that you fish for bass. Yeah, so this is fascinating right here. This is kind of how they do their colors. It's a lot, it's a lot thicker. And uh, you know, they measure it out. I mean, they'll, this entire cup right here, boom. You know, and it's a lot more concentrated. So, a lot, a lot, a lot more concentrated. So this little tiny scooper right here would run baits for me all day. So, yeah, this stuff is is super concentrated 
uh, pigment here and you can see it's real thick like a paste. So here's a bunch of colors up here, some purple. And color technologies for you guys uh, that hand pour at home is Lureworks. So Lureworks and Spike It is the retail sector of color technologies. So a lot of this is still Lureworks colors. Uh, at the end of the day, this is just the production uh, production side of it, in much more concentrated, um, much more concentrated offerings. All right, so we're here with Mr. Big Show Terry Scroggins, of course, and this is the big mold. Golly, that thing is huge! Yes. So, so, so is that the nine inch? So this is the nine inch kicker tail. That's a nine inch AI kicker so, tail. So if you get buy this mold from uh, Angling AI, you're gonna get two four. Five, I think five cavities. Okay, five, five so cavities. This is a production, so you know, yeah. we sell these things, so we mass right. produce them. Right, right, mass produce. Look. So, yeah, so that's what gorgeous. you're buying there is, you know, hundred and fifty dollars or whatever. This here's, you know, sixty five hundred. So. Right, right. <laughs> but, but <laughs> little, little, little more expensive. Yeah. So yeah. For the, for the hobbyist to make your own, you know, it's it's cool to do. You can make your own colors. You can make your plastic, you know, sink, absolutely float. Soft, medium, hard, whatever you want. Right. Um, here, what we've done here is, is taking a bunch of colors that uh, you know the, the people want the most. Right. Your, your, your popular colors, and that's what we sell. So, if you're at home and you want to make your own color, you'll make you know however soft, you know, hard, floating, sinking plastic, you can do it yourself. Right. That's the neat thing about doing it at home. But, Absolutely. Um, we take what we want to sell, uh, what, what most people want, and that's what we produce. Right. Yeah. No. It's just it's cool to see a mold that some of my viewers and other hand pourers ha also have at home but see it in the production yeah. you know see, see the production side of it you know so the, now now how he how heavy is something like that is that 10 pounds 30 pounds 40 pounds uh, probably weighs about 30 pounds 30 pounds, 30 pounds and that's just yeah. half it's something you want to <laughs> hold on to all day long right day, so. yeah no that's that's really awesome no I, I wanted to see that one while i was here and I've never seen the nine inch either. I only have the seven, so mine's. So yeah, yeah the kicker cut, the kicker tail comes in a five point five, a seven, and a nine. Right. The nine <clears throat> probably don't sell that many nines. It's made for more ledge fishing, offshore structure fishing. It's a big worm. Right. It's a huge. Uh, the the five point five and the seven inch is the most popular. Um, and the, you know, the five point five, I think we can pour like fifty at a time of it. So it's right. It's a lot, and it a lot to, more to, to me, it'd be a good trailer bait as well. The, yep. the five point yep. five. So awesome. Great design. Absolutely. So most of us buy our plastisol by the one gallon drum, five gallon drum. I used to buy by the 55 gallon drum. They buy by these huge containers. So uh, pretty cool. I, I mean, it would literally take me multiple years to use half of that. And here we have DOA shrimp. Yeah, this kind of clear cinnamon with the orange tail. The mold for this thing is really cool. The way that it shoots the split colors. A lot different from how I shoot my split colors. But uh, yeah, really cool to see how to see how this is done on a big professional level here. So we're about to pump some uh, raw plastic out of this big drum into the smaller drum here. And, uh, and then he's, he's, okay, yeah, he's gonna mix up uh, this color again. So how many gallons are you going to do? Five. Five gallons? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So he's going to put five gallons into this one, and then he's going to mix up some more of this chartreuse color to then keep running moles, because uh, the first container, they depleted that one. So time to mix up more. I heard basically four tables. Okay. So, so that's four tablespoons right there? Yeah. And that scooper. All right. Here we go. And this particular color is four tablespoons of yellow and one tablespoon of white. Okay. So yellow and white. And so just that will color that entire five gallons. So that's pretty incredible. I've never mixed up five gallons of just one color at one time in my life. And now he's going to add some white pigment to it. White te one teaspoon. One teaspoon of white. Okay, there we go. Just to kill it a little bit of bland. I mean, right. Strongness of the yellow. Okay. And then and then you'll mix this up real well. Yeah. 
okay. I think we're about to mix here. Yeah, here we go. There she goes. How long will you let that mix for? Five minutes, and then from there it's ready to start shooting. So, so there's where where does the flake get added? The glitter. Where does the glitter get added? Or, if you add glitter to it, it gets added now. Okay, so if, if this had glitter, you put it in here. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it had glitter or not. So. No, it just don't have glitter. Gotcha. There it is, guys. Five gallons is gonna go like that. All right, guys. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed the tour of the uh, soft plastic bait production plant. Uh, it was really cool to see how it's done on a big scale. I've never been able to visit um, a, a bait production uh, facility like that. Um, you know, I've seen how it's done in some videos. I, you know, I've studied it a lot, learned about it. Um, but until you see it, it's just the scale is unbelievable. I mean, they're buying like five gallon buckets of glitter. You know, just one color, one size. I mean, you. you you, you saw the way that they do the pigments, um, you know, the, the molds are 40, 50 pounds and, you know, 30, 40 cavities, sometimes more cavities than that. Uh, so it was really cool to, to see how it's done. Um, you know, it was great being there with, with uh, Mr. Scroggins and, and uh, Josh from AI, especially considering that they collaborated together on that kicker tail worm, which you can actually buy too. I have a, a five cavity kicker tail worm. So it was cool to see the production side of that bait um, and, uh, and just see how it's done on a large scale. So, you know, this, this is a, um, and, and that was relatively a smaller operation for a production plant. You know, they pour for just a few companies, um, but you know, it keeps them busy all year long is what the guy was telling me. So, I mean, they, they do that all day, every day. And I just, I can't even fathom the amount of baits coming out of there. I mean, they're reject piles. I, I forgot to film it, but you know, we all have throwaway baits, right? Reject baits that don't work out. Their reject baits like filled up those entire plastic bins um, that they buy their plastics all in. So like a thousand pounds of reject plastic. And what they do is they actually sell it to companies who then um, remelt it back down and grind it up and then it gets produced into uh, shoe soles flip-flops and like uh, traffic cones and things like that so these facilities that are using large amounts of plastisol all of their throwaway plastisol gets recycled and gets reused um, into everyday goods like shoes and traffic cones that you see on the side of the road that's all plastisol so uh, really cool stuff to see um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, it was really cool to see we've got a lot more stuff planned for this weekend so I'll be putting some more videos out um, you know, in, in the next week or two that were all filmed during this weekend. Um, but that was really cool to see. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, stay tuned for some more great content. Please shoot me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. And also, if you've ever been to a, a bait production plant, I would love to hear uh, your story about it as well. So um, as a bait maker, it was really cool to see the larger commercial side of things. So we're going to get started on some more content. And we will catch you guys next time.